G'day folks, Mad Aussie here and welcome to the Aussie Report. In this episode we're going to take another look at police covering up for pedophiles. This is from New South Wales and jumping over to the website here, this is oz.exposed. Um, I'm not sure if I've heard of this or not, although the logo does look familiar. Um, this was posted on April the 28th, 2021. It is titled, New South Wales Police Pedophile Cover-Up Exposed. Scrolling down, this says, Explosive allegations are emerging regarding high-level collusion of New South Wales Police Detectives and DCJ Child Protection Officers to protect two alleged pedophiles. A witness has come forward this week stating that a police detective based in Wollongong linked with the Joint Child Protection Response Program pressured her into making a false statement in order to put an innocent man behind bars. In a signed admission this week, the woman said that one of the perpetrators had paid her $5,000 to remain silent and that she knew that the man who was arrested in December 2020 was innocent. She claims she had told this to the interviewing detective, whom she says called her a liar. She said the detective stated that the men whom she alleged to be perpetrators were not child sex predators and that it was all in her head. This is despite a complaint being raised in 2019 against one of the men for historical child sexual abuse. The witness at the centre of these allegations also says that the action of several Wollongong detectives caused the involvement of DCJ child protection officers who removed his five stepchildren from his wife following his arrest without justification. He, the accused, was always respectful, caring towards me and he loved his stepdaughters and took good care of them. When I told the detective this, he called me a liar and said that the accused was a nasty, horrible, dangerous man and he was going to make sure that the accused remained behind bars and that he didn't need proof of evidence in regards to the accused as DCJ had said enough about him to make his stepdaughter say that he sexually assaulted her. I said, you can't do that. He said, yes, I can do what I like. He had said that he had no intentions of returning the accused's phone and that he and his wife can suffer the outcome of all what's happened. This made me cry as I felt for my daughter and her husband and her children that were falsely removed due to the detective's lies and orchestrated events. The statement he did with me, I asked not to have to go ahead with, as what he has put in his statement is fabricated by him. He had put me under so much pressure and intimidated me that I was having heart palpitations and could hardly breathe due to his bullying way and standover merchant ways he used on me. Through a complex orchestration of what the mother claims are unnecessary violence restraining orders made by Wollongong detectives, she says that her family has been purposely targeted and kept separated for about five months by detectives and child protection officers. She said she was pressured to leave her husband by child protection workers in the Lakamba office and that if she didn't, she would not see her children again. The mother refused to and she states this resulted in all contact being cut with her children. A recording made voluntarily by one of the men at the centre of the allegations in February 2021 discloses that he takes responsibility for sexually assaulting the couple's 12-year-old daughter and that the innocent man was set up and charged with the offences. In the recording, the man states his name and that he admits to being the perpetrator of three sexual assaults on the 12-year-old girl. The same admission has also been made to others and the recordings handed to police, but police have failed to act on the information provided. The witnesses claims that the girl was also pressured by detectives and child protection officers to state that the perpetrator was her stepfather and says that the girl did not want to say this in her statement. She disclosed to me she didn't want to say this about her stepfather, but caseworkers at DCJ Lacamba and detectives all pressured her to make these allegations by saying her stepfather was a bad father and that both he and her mother hurt her 
and the other kids when this isn't the case. Both parents have always taken great care of the children. She told me that the first perpetrator told her this was set up because none of the DCJ workers liked the accused. The man accused of sexual assault and who is currently on remand has stated his innocence and is pleading not guilty to charges. From behind bars, he has asked, why am I here? A five-year AVO taken out by the mother in 2020 against one of the perpetrators has also been discovered to no longer remain in place, presumed to have been removed by detectives. Complaints by the mother to the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission were rejected as warranting no further action in February 2021. DCJ caseworkers have stated they are aware of allegations made against one of the alleged perpetrators but have placed two of the mother's children with him saying they are monitoring the situation. This is not the first time JCP, RP, detectives and DCJ child protection officers have been alleged to fabricate evidence. A number of cases known to advocates where weak and potentially fabricated evidence by authorities has been made have been dismissed by courts in recent years. So that's the end of that article. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, follow, all that good stuff and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me